Good day. In this lecture, I'll talk about my experience as a school administrator, educational technology advocate, basketball coach, and certified data analyst, especially in the context of leveraging data in a variety of ways. In 2017, I became one of the basketball coaches in the Ateneo de Manila High School, eventually joining the coaching staff of both the Ateneo Blue Eaglets UAAP Juniors basketball team, as well as the Philippine Athletic Youth Association Aspirants basketball team. Now, I was never a varsity basketball athlete as a student, so I had to think of a unique way to help out my team. I asked myself, if I never played varsity level basketball, what could be my value added contribution to a varsity team? Enter data analytics. But before I detail how analytics played a part in the fortunes of our basketball team, let me very briefly tell you how my fascination with numbers and crunching data started in the first place. My passion for data had its seeds planted back when I was in the Ateneo de Manila grade school, buying and trading NBA, Marvel, and of course, ace trump cards. You know, those cards with stats, charts, and a lot of numbers. Collecting and trading these cards helped me deepen my appreciation for figures and data even before I knew it was there. Fast forward more than two decades later and going back to my experience with coaching basketball. I knew that I had to offer something unique to help my team. And that unique element was looking at the game from the lens of data analytics. Now that's easier said than done especially when it comes to a game like basketball, where there are 10 players at any point in time on the court with so many things happening at the same time and with so many basketball terms and metrics that can be recorded or tracked. From basic stats like points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks, to advanced stats like effective field goal percentage, rebound rates, turnover rates, and free throw rates to hustle stats like deflections, closeouts, loose ball dives, missed box outs, to tracking very specific actions like the number and kinds of cuts, screens, and passes, to name just a few. I would like to concretize this by giving a very simple example of how we leveraged analytics in the Ateneo de Manila's Paya Under-15 Aspirants team to create value and achieve an historic outcome. In the 2019 Paya Aspirant season, one of the data elements we regularly used to break our games down and study our opponents was the shot chart. Now, the shot chart is not something usually seen by fans in box scores or TV coverages of basketball, but it was extremely instrumental in helping us find the weaknesses in our opponents. The shot chart is not the most advanced or even high-tech way to present basketball data, but it can still be very effective. In one of our knockout games in that 2019 season, we faced a team that had beaten us in the elimination round a few weeks prior. We needed to find our opponent's weakness, and the shot chart helped us to do so. Because of the spread of the shots shown on the chart, we noticed that our opponents habitually set their players up almost exclusively on one side of the court. And having that insight helped us craft a defensive game plan that would take them out of that particular comfort zone. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details of that game anymore, but suffice to say that looking at our shot charts data, deriving insight, and creating concrete value through our game plan helped us win not only that game, but the entire process eventually helped us win Ateneo de Manila's first Paya Under-15 Basketball Championship in more than 20 years. It's pretty crazy. Much thanks to the shot chart, which is one example of a simple yet effective way to present data to your audience in an engaging and understandable way without letting the data get overwhelming. This experience I had using data in the context of basketball motivated me to see what else data could do 
especially to improve the communities around me, like my community in the Ateneo de Manila Junior High School, especially during the pandemic. If our basketball team could win with data on the court, Surely our school could also achieve our own modest victories with data, both inside and outside the classroom. This desire to leverage data led to a number of initiatives, including the Grade 9 Varsity Basketball Pool Mood Form Tracker and the Junior High School Community Context Questionnaire. One of the data projects we worked on this past school year was something close to my heart. As both a teacher and a varsity basketball coach, it was a no-brainer for me to work with data in the context of student-athletes. And so, together with Grade 9 head coach Reggie Arumin, we implemented what we called our Grade 9 Varsity Basketball Pool Mood Form. This was inspired by the initiative of a number of our class moderators, who throughout the school year asked their students to periodically fill out mood forms. These mood forms were filled out during our morning check-in sessions, simply asking the students to choose an emoji about their predominant emotion for that day. Joy, gratitude, sorrow, anger, etc. They were also asked about anything that may be giving them some anxiety, and if they wanted to schedule an appointment with a particular teacher or with a guidance counselor. The Grade 9 Varsity Basketball Pool mood form adopted this framework in the context of our Grade 9 varsity basketball team. We had our players fill out the mood form right before every practice session, so we coaches could have data that would help us monitor their emotional levels on a pretty regular basis, and if needed, help us identify and counsel students who needed some form of guidance or intervention. We knew that as coaches, our capacity to reach out to our players and mentor them had a potentially profound effect on their levels of motivation. And our varsity basketball mood form helped us maximize that capacity. It's something we've resolved to continue this coming school year, and we hope to share this practice with other varsity teams. Perhaps our most ambitious project in terms of leveraging data to uncover context, however, was what we called our Junior High School Context Questionnaire. Like the mood form, this was actually inspired by the efforts of our subject teachers, so much of the credit goes to them. A number of our teachers, upon the start of the school year, wanted to better understand the contexts of their students. So using Google Forms, they surveyed their students about a variety of things connected to their context, like internet connectivity, family setup, gadget use, and many more. My fellow cluster coordinators and I in the junior high school thought this was such a wonderful idea. And with the blessing of the administration, we decided to scale this initiative to involve not just a few classes, but all classes. We broadened the scope of the context questionnaire, and after collecting the questionnaire's data from the classes, we had help from our testing and research office to break everything down. The first iteration of this project was called the Junior High School Students Context Questionnaire, launched in August 2020. This initiative was meant to generate data and insights that may help the junior high leadership, faculty, and staff have a better picture of the students' collective context, and in turn, better inform our discussions and decisions directly affecting the kind of service we can provide for members of the community during and even following the COVID-19 pandemic. We believed that the results of the junior high students' context questionnaire could potentially yield meaningful insights, benefits, and value for the junior high school community. And to be completely honest and modesty aside, it did. The student's context questionnaire gave us concrete data that helped us more accurately assess the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on our stakeholders, their family life, well-being, and adjustment to online learning. In addition, it also yielded valuable data that helped us identify the strongest features of our school environment for school year 2020 to 2021. In essence, 
the risk of making decisions based on outdated impressions, internal biases, and anecdotal evidence was significantly mitigated because of the data and insights we had gathered, processed, and shared via the junior high students' context questionnaire. We wanted the results and insights to lead to more efficient and effective services for our community, especially as each stakeholder continued to come to grips with the wide-ranging effects of COVID-19. Just to share, one of the many simple but valuable insights we generated from the junior high students' context questionnaire was this. We saw that we had students residing in cities all over the country, with many outside Metro Manila and Luzon, and even a couple outside the country in South Korea. We mapped out in which cities and districts most of our students resided, which came in very handy when we were distributing school materials, and more so when we identified students who needed relief goods in the aftermath of Typhoon Ulysses. That's the kind of value that was created thanks to our community's efforts to leverage data. Moving forward, we knew we wanted to continue this initiative in the future, and we also felt that we could actually scale this even more to involve not just students, but other stakeholders like our faculty, staff, and parents. This is the reason why towards the end of the school year, we rolled out the second iteration of this project, now known as the Junior High Community Context Questionnaire. It had three versions, for students, employees, and parents, with items contextualized specific to that segment of the community. As of this recording, the data is still being broken down, but initial results have promised very rich insights that will help our decision-making and direction-setting moving forward. Before I end, let me reiterate two things. The merit of presenting your data in an engaging manner and the importance of actually creating value from that data. Keep in mind that data, no matter how comprehensive or valid it is, will not really make an impact if we present it in indigestible ways. On the other hand, no matter how beautiful our charts or how expertly crafted our data dashboards are, all those trappings will not create value if we, as decision makers, do not use that data in our discussions and processes. This, I think, is the most important step in using data. And maybe that's the step that is easiest to skip because once the data is generated, it's easy to just say, okay, engineering data, tapos. Pero hindi pa tapos. Remember that once the data is available, that's when the actual work of value creation begins, because this is where you figure out what to do with your new insights. Perhaps the most significant thing for educators, especially school decision makers, is to accept that analyzing data means getting down to the why behind that data. It's important to move beyond an observation and to arrive at an insight that will enable you to make a smart, data-driven decision. Be curious and ask questions when the data is presented to you. Be creative about how you present and tell a story with that data. And maximize your critical thinking in using insights that will yield value from that data. To close, I'd like to leave you with a quote from information designer Georgia Lupi, who once said, Always ask, what is the point of all these numbers? People are not interested in data for the sake of it, because numbers are never the point. They're always the means to an end. Consider data, all kinds of data, as the beginning of the conversation and not the end. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I've helped you reflect on your own opportunities to win with data. Thank you.